Sarah, and welcome to my art stream. Today we're going to be doing a drawing of koi fish, and I'll go ahead and bring that up so you can see what we're going to do, the reference photo. So this is the fish we're going to be drawing. Notice that there's a little red in it, so grab a red colored pencil if you have one. Now, uh, if you are interested in looking at the reference photo the whole time, you're welcome to. If you go to my Discord server, reference photos in there, everyone is welcome to join. There's also a button farther down on the page that says Discord. I highly encourage that you um, use the reference photo because it helps to not only look at what I'm doing, but to see where I'm going. Um, okay, real quick, just about supplies. You can use a number two pencil. Um, I also have my own erasers. I just like having these chunky erasers. But then I'm also using this set here. Let me turn that around. So this is a, a pencil set called uh, Geoconda. It's by Koinor is the brand. And I like this set because it's got the sepia tones, uh, these reds and browns. But it also has graphite, lead, and charcoal. Plus it's got a spreader which these you can buy by themselves. You, I think Walmart sells them for like a couple bucks. It's like a two pack. And then it has a kneaded eraser where you can mold it into whatever shape you want. So you do not have to have this. You can use a number two pencil, but today it's gonna to be especially useful to have some art pencils. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna use my 2B pencil. You're welcome to use the number two. Hello, Bumbread, welcome. Um, today we're gonna to be doing a drawing class. So, and we're also doing koi fish. So since you are just joining us, I'll just bring up what we're gonna be doing today. So this is what we're drawing today. We're gonna do a little koi. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 2B pencil or your number two pencil, and we're just gonna start just doing some, some general lines to make a border. Now, it doesn't have to be a solid line, but if you want to do a solid line, uh, the best way to get a straight line is by moving your entire arm rather than your wrist. You don't wanna move your wrist. So we're just doing a very light border. So you can barely even see mine, that's how light it is. Okay. That just gives us something to work off of. Always blow, don't brush because you're uh, you can brush your lines and smear them. It is something Japanese. You are correct. Koi are Japanese. So yes, that's what we're doing today. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually draw the outlines of where our fish is going to be. All right. So the first one we're going to do right about there. Let's see, I'm gonna draw my border a little darker so you guys can see it better. There. So my first line is probably about an inch from the, uh, maybe a little bit bigger, but an inch from the Okay, Crixano says, I got actual drawing paper this time. Last time all I could find was watercolor paper. Oh, well you're gonna like drawing paper because it's a lot smoother. Yeah, watercolor has that grit to it. So this is great. All right, we're going to do another line down approximately the same distance as the top line from the bottom. Mine's a little bit closer, but that's okay. And then we're gonna do one right about the middle. So, so this is going to be the, the shape of our fish. Now between this line, the, the middle line and the top line, 
we're going to do an, uh, an oval that's slanted up towards the left. Like that. All right, now down at the bottom. Oh, good, yes, pencil sharpeners are very handy. I've got a little sharpener here somewhere. Where is it? Where's my buddy? I've got a little jar of toys here that I play with. And I think my sharpener's in here somewhere. Um, maybe it got, oh, there's my, my little sharpener there. It's a good thing to have. All right, so we're gonna do, starting about the middle here, the middle of this line, we're gonna do a, a curved line coming up. Just, just a, a long curved line. Then, we're gonna do, right next to it, another curved line. And then we can go ahead and erase out this middle section here. We can also erase our guidelines if you'd like to go ahead and erase those. Welcome. If you're just now joining, all we've done so far is we drew a border that was about an inch from our, our uh, the, the outside edge of our paper. Then we did three lines. We did one about an inch from the border on either side and then one in the middle. We did an oval between the middle and the, um, here I'll just draw this in so you can see. We did an oval between the middle and the top line, and then we drew these curved lines coming down to the bottom line. And so that's all we've done so far. We are not far in, and today we're doing koi. And Bumbread says, I also get uneasy feeling whenever I see someone using non-sharp pencil, always. Okay, well, mine's not a sharp pencil, but that's okay. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, we're going to kind of the the top here, let's see. It has a flat nose. <laughs> That's kind of an angle like that. Koi have like these kind of almost like catfish. They've got that that snout. I'm just rounding that out a little bit. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Now we're going to draw some guidelines. Uh, first of all, we're going to do a line kind of going right across the top and it's going to be angled. That might be a little bit too much of an angle. Let's see. Let me see if I can adjust that a little bit. There we go. And we're gonna do another one that's about halfway through the body. Like remember where our line was? This is about halfway between those two lines. And then we're gonna do, just redraw our line here. Okay. 
Okay. So now we're going to draw our fins. So between this line and this line is going, going to be our first set of fins. So um, we'll just do like kind of a curved, oops. It came down just a little too soon. And then this one, like that. On the other side, it's kind of an S shape, you know, just a little bit of a flowy line there. In fact, this one I could probably make just a little bit more. Koi are very beautiful. You know, they have they have nice flowing lines and they look very graceful, which is why everybody likes having them as pets. One of my neighbors had a koi pond when I lived in Charlotte and uh, her um, We had a stork, I think it was a stork or a heron or something that would come and just sit right at the edge of the pond. And she had like a net over it so that it couldn't get anything, but it would sit right at the edge of the pond and just wait, um, trying to get the koi. Okay, so we're gonna do another little, little line here. I don't know why I'm not curving enough. It needs to be more of an S shape. There we go. Okay, so for these up here, we're gonna actually do, let's see. We'll just do a little line that way and one that way. Now maybe this is a little higher up. Right. And then this one, uh, we're going to do a little bit farther down on the fish's body, just a, not too far, just a little tiny, little tiny lines. This one might be a little bit too long. All right, in between these, we're going to have, uh, it's going to basically follow, I'm gonna actually draw really lightly, like a little arch. I'll hold this up so you can see, because that's pretty light. I'm just drawing little arches. Oops, and that one went to the wrong. I went, I drew that to the wrong thing. I was wondering like why that was so difficult to draw. I'm like, how did, how did I miss that? There we go. So I'm just drawing that little arch in there. And now I'm gonna follow this arch by drawing parallel lines about the same distance apart and then we can take out that guideline There's fin number one. All right, we'll do the same over here. And 
I'm just doing pretty sketchy lines. I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to do like perfectly straight lines. I'm just letting them be sketchy. Got to watch those sketchy lines. I know a lot of bad, bad artist jokes. Being sketchy is one of them. Being shady, it's another terrible pun. Are there really terrible puns though? Aren't they all kind of great? You know? I think they are. So this guy, the puns are sketchy to be honest. <laughs> Well, yeah, my puns might be a little sketchy. Uh, there's a really good chance. I like cheesy humor, though. It goes a long way to make me smile. Oops. All right, so I'm taking out the guidelines. <laughs> you make sketchy puns. I make punny sketches. Nice. Nice, bum bread. I appreciate that. <laughs> that was good and cheesy, too. Uh, very nice. All right, so I'm going to do the tail, the tail fin. So Continuing this line here, the right line, it's going to come over and come down like that. Then a little ways up. Your koi is already looking terrible and we barely started. Well, hold your critique because there's a chance that it doesn't look as terrible as you think. Um, because, you know, I mean, I don't know. I, I think it probably doesn't look as bad as you think it does. So just, just hold that thought, and it might actually end up looking better. So we'll see. We'll see in the critique, right? Okay. So now I'm going to do another line there. And I just went a little ways up, like maybe about an inch up. And I'm going to do that same kind of arch there, just very lightly, so I have a guide. Now this gets a little fatter. And one more. There we go. Crixano, I bet based on some of the artwork I've seen that you've done, I bet your koi looks amazing. I think you're too hard on yourself. All right, I'm gonna take out these guidelines here. There we go. I want my koi to be a little fatter. I'm gonna actually give him Your koi looks too skinny and long. Well, <coughs> mine looks pretty skinny and long too, actually. But here's the thing. So when you first start drawing, and I know that you were you were previously an artist because I've seen some of your work from like high school and stuff. Um, but, you know, maybe you haven't drawn in a while. And the thing is, is that when you first start drawing, proportion is the first thing to be off. Always. Like, well, almost always. But like say when you look at like high school drawings, usually proportion is what's off because um, it's just really hard to eyeball things, but that's what practice 
that's what comes with practice. So the more you take my classes, um, and I would even go back and watch my VODs, watch some of them, because like maybe you can see which one you might be interested in. Um, if you go to my website and you look at my schedule, which uh, there is, the pictures for some reason don't show on mobile, but if you look on uh, desktop, the the pictures on my sketch, like if you look at the calendar, you can go back and you can see the reference image of what we were doing. So you can maybe find one that's interesting to you and go back and do that as practice. Um, another way to get to my website is there's actually a button down below that says schedule. And you can click on that and that should take you right to my schedule. But I would recommend, uh, I would recommend going back and just doing some practice ones, some practice um, drawings. That will help with the proportion though. Okay, so we've got that. All right, I wanna do this fin on the back. So starting about halfway through, about halfway through like between here and here. So right about there. And we're gonna end right below. See there, so you can see that. So we're starting here and ending here. We're going to do a curved, just a gently curved line like that. Okay, now this we're going to do, let's see, our first line like that. And then from there, we're going to just draw a little guideline. And then everything is going to reach that guideline. Now, these, I don't think I'm even drawing these correctly. But they're going to get smaller, right? Because they're following that guideline. I'm going to erase my guideline, but I want these to curve a little bit. So what I'm going to do is additionally have these kind of curve over. I'm going to just bring them over just a little bit. So all I'm doing is adding a little bit to those, to the ends. All right, so now we want to draw the eyes. The eyes are going to go around this line here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out doing kind of a C shape, an elongated C shape. Like that. And then we're going to do the opposite shape, but just slightly longer. On both sides. Now we can go ahead and erase this guideline. And the last thing we're going to do is right above here on both sides, I'm just going to do little, little marks, little hash marks, and then in between the eyes, so it's on that line that we did, we're going to do a hash mark up there. Now we're going to do a scoop, and scoop up, and then back down, like a little, uh, I always forget which one goes up first, is it sine, sine, sine wave, I think. It goes up first. I don't know. Trig was a long time ago. Sinusoid. Oh yeah, I've got a math guy on here. Hello. <laughs> 
Well, yeah, but doesn't one go the opposite? Well, they go the opposite direction, but I'm trying to remember, you know, you've, oh, I don't want to draw it. I, I don't want to mess up my picture. I was like, I was going to draw a little graph. Sine starts at zero. That's kind of what, that's what I was thinking. That's what I thought is that sine starts at zero and cosine starts whatever opposite. All right, I'm not that far off. I mean, high school might have been a while ago for me, but <laughs> I'm not that far off. Okay, we're going to do a little... I at least remember a few things. <laughs> so we've got a little line here. And I'm going to just clean up... I'm cleaning up this line over here. Remember, if you want a straight line, move your whole arm instead of your wrist. Just move your whole arm. That's how you get straight lines. Okay. Now we're going to draw some spots on our fish. Mumbred says you should watch 3B1B's lockdown maths. He blows up my brain every Thursday and Friday. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that if there is someone out there that blows up your brain, I probably won't understand a word that he's saying. You guys, you should know, you know, anyone who's watching, Mumbred is an excellent mathematician and you should check out his stream when he does it. He's, an, he's a very good teacher as well. I especially love his geometry stream. It's my favorite. B. Punsky is shown in the chat chat's user list, but you can't at him. Oh. Yeah, he might not be watching right now. Probably goes in and out. Yeah, probably was just checking it out to see what we were working on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my red chalk pencil. Now, if you have uh, like a red um, colored pencil, now is the time to use it. So we're gonna do some spots on the fish. Now, if you don't have any colored pencil at all, just use your number two pencil or whatever uh, black pencil you're using is fine. Okay, so I'm going to do some spots. I'm going to do a spot um, like here. And then I'm going to do one. And I'm just making it kind of a an organic type shape. I'm trying not to be like too, too straight with my lines. This one, I might come here and continue it on this side. So right now I'm just making the shapes. I'm not filling them in yet. And then I'll do one down here. Now I, we can go ahead and fill them in. So try to stay in the same direction and just lightly, you don't have to press very hard. Now's the good time to make your hands shake. The shapes naturally come out to be nat natural. Yes. Yeah, now you can move your wrist. Bumbread, you are correct. I try to go the same direction and apply the same pressure, if possible, throughout the entire thing. And 
then I'm going to get my 2B pencil again. And I'm going to do a couple little black shapes here. We'll do one down here. And then these, I'm going to lightly fill these in. Okay, now we're gonna do our scales. So our scales are just going to be, let me just get some of these eraser, little eraser bits. Um, our scales are just going to be little uh, U shapes. And we're gonna start up here and they can be all different sizes. and they're gonna be overlapping. So I'm gonna hold this up so you can see these. And you just want to, almost like little bricks, you're gonna layer them. And it's okay if they're not perfect, because of course, our fish in real life probably wouldn't have perfect scales. And just go right over your spots. We just want to get all of our scales on here. So this is probably going to take a decent amount of time. So we'll just uh, keep going. Tell you about an art project I'm working on. For I take this class um, that I've talked about before on stream, but normally every year I go to this farm in Virginia uh, in the mountains and um, we do art and we do writing and it's just like a really a really cool class well this year of course because of corona we can't go so we are doing zoom zoom classes so I had a, a class tonight and what we're doing is we're using uh, watercolor but instead we're using coffee so we're painting with coffee. And if you've ever watched one of my watercolor classes, sometimes you know how we'll wet, we'll wet the paper first and then like let the paint kind of do its thing. Well, that's basically what we're doing with the coffee. And so we've got different, um, different levels of, of coffee of like how, how the strengths, different strengths. So I've got like a light, a medium and a dark. And uh, I just drop that into the water and let it dry where it dries. And you get some really interesting things, but you can get relatively precise paintings. And so I'm going to show you here in just a second, I'll show you what I've done so far. I'm not finished, but I'll show you the work that I've done. So you can see some of my artwork because the stuff that I teach, this isn't my artwork. You know, this is, this is just, I'm teaching a subject but it's not 
you know, my own art is different. So I will show you some of that. You'll get to see some of my stuff. So I'm going to let my scales, getting down into the tail, I'm going to let them be, get smaller. My little U's are going to get smaller. Okay. Here, I'll go ahead and show you. So what we were doing, the whole, it was, we had to choose a face. So I chose pictures of me when I was little. So here's one. So this is with coffee. Now for the eyes, I did use a little bit of blue um, and red watercolor, just a little bit. So that's me when I was little. And this is another picture. This is the one I'm not, this one I'm almost finished with. This one I'm not 100% finished with. So that was another picture of me when I was little. So, ta-da. So that's, that's um, some of my own artwork. Here's one I did a couple weeks ago. This one is, uh, this is also with coffee. It's a vulture. And of course, this is like the mirror image. And you can definitely see like the coffee doing its thing in this. This is where like I, I let it, like I would add a little bit of water and add some more coffee and kind of let it do its thing. So I like vultures a lot. They're very cool animals. Thank you, Bumbread. All right, so now we're gonna color in the eyes. Um, first, what I want you to do, I'm making mine a little darker. I want you to draw some little circles inside, just two little circles inside. These are gonna be the whites of the eyes. So I'm gonna hold this up so you can see. See, I did two little circles inside. Thank you very much, Bum Brad. I appreciate that. I like painting. Painting was my first concentration before I came to textiles. All right, so now color around those little circles, like fill everything in around those circles. What I really love is oil painting, but I haven't done that in a while. Okay, now coming from, we're gonna start on either side. We're gonna have the whiskers, you know, like the catfish whiskers. So it's gonna come down like that, just like a, a curly shape. And it doesn't have to look exactly like mine. It can be any shape. Because when it's swimming through the water, you know, those things are going to move. All right. So at the bottom, it's going to come to a point. And at the top, it comes to a point. Everything else is out a little bit. Like so you can see it. So I'm going to show you up close. So at the top, it, it starts at a point. And at the bottom, it starts at a point, but then the rest of it is, is a little bit spread out. I've never done oil painting before, although I might have some oil paints. Oil painting is amazing. Now, I don't teach any oil paints. I don't teach oil painting um, just because it doesn't dry. I mean, I guess I could. I could do wet on wet like Bob Ross does, but then you could just watch Bob Ross because he's awesome. Uh, I don't do his style of painting with, with oil paints. So my stuff takes a really long time to dry, like weeks. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start. Now, if you have charcoal, you said you love watching Bob Ross. I do too, man. Even just his voice. I don't even have to be doing the painting or anything like that. I just love his voice. It's just, you know, it's very soothing. Um, okay, so I'm going to use charcoal. You can do this with a number two pencil, so you don't have to necessarily do the um, charcoal with me. Okay, so I'm going to use a charcoal pencil. You watched a video when someone explained logarithms Bob Ross style. Oh, that would be cool. I would totally listen to someone explain logarithms Bob Ross style. 
anything Bob Ross style actually would be great. It's got a very soothing voice. It's very rich, that nice baritone. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so I'm gonna take my charcoal pencil and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line along the side of the biggest fin here. And then as it gets up, I'm going to just connect with the, um, the tendril. I don't know what these are called. I'm gonna call them a tendril and continue all the way up and around. I'm gonna do this on both sides. Like that. And then we're gonna fill this in. Now again, if you're using a number two pencil, that's fine. But just what we'll do is we will use a spreader and that will help fill it in and make it darker. If you don't have a spreader, you can take a paper towel and wad it up and uh, use a paper towel to spread or your finger, but I wouldn't recommend your finger right now because charcoal, if you're using charcoal, I wouldn't recommend it, but I have a spreader. So it makes it look nice and smooth. Now I'm starting on the left side because I'm right-handed. If I started on the right side, then I would get charcoal all over my hand. All right. So now we're gonna do the other side. Fill that in. Now, if I'm moving too fast, let me know and I can slow down. If you're watching this on YouTube or VOD, you can pause me. The only thing I don't like about charcoal is the sound it makes on the paper. It's a very nails on a chalkboard kind of sound to me. I do not like it. Mm. Well, charcoal is also very dusty, and I guess that's something that I don't really like. There's always lots of little little charcoal bits flying around. If for some reason you don't have charcoal, but you have a darker pencil, like a 4B or a 6B, that would work as well. There we go. Okay. Then I'm going to do this little area here. On both sides.
drink of water. It's amazing what just a little bit of outlining will do for a drawing. Okay. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna fill in, let's see, let's go ahead and outline the body. really is like the worst sound. Charcoal, come on. What are you doing to me? I'm not doing the edges yet because um, we're going to do something different right at the edges of the fins. All right, let's see. And I'm going to go around the top and around the outside of our tendrils. So here's what we're going to do. Up close to the fish, we're going to start shading everything in. Leave a little bit of an area around the tendrils. I mean around the fins, sorry. There's charcoal dust everywhere. <sighs> Welcome, if you're just joining the stream, we are drawing koi fish tonight. So I'm just kind of steering clear. I'm just leaving a little spot like right around uh, the fins. Just steering clear of that. Now there's going to be a couple of areas that I'm going to leave kind of light. So I'm going to draw those real quick. We're going to do kind of a, an area here. We're going to do one here. And then we're going to do one here. So these kind of semicircle areas, these are going to end up being our ripples in the water. So I'm going to be kind of light around those areas. I'm going to still, still go in them, but I'm going to shade all the way up to them. I'm still leaving kind of an area around my fins. I'm going to shade up to them and then I'm going to go light when I get inside of them. <sighs> I'm just doing a little arc around the fin edges. If you actually have charcoal that's in stick form like this, this is a lot easier. You can do whole areas like that. 
So I would highly encourage you to use use it if you have it. I'm going to continue doing this because I want you guys to see it takes a little longer and I want you especially if you're using a number two pencil. Okay, I've got this area down here. I'm going to actually turn mine upside down to do this top part here. Now notice I'm not shading this in yet. I'm uh, not I'm not using my spreader just yet. Not just yet. So yeah, the piece that I'm going to be working on I'm doing a series where I, uh, of me as a little girl, and the idea is that kids kind of, um, like the thing is, is that people in general are like the glue of the universe, right? Like we're, we're not really the glue. That's not right, like the right word, but we are the universe. Like we are part of it, right? You know, a lot of times people, we tend to remove ourselves from nature, but we are nature. Everything we make is nature because we, even if it's man-made, it's synthetic. It's still nature because we made it, right? So, um, and it's made from some kind of substance that at some point originated in nature. So there is no such thing. Now look, my pencil is getting kind of crazy. So I'm going to, I'm going to sharpen it, but I have to do it over my trash can. So you guys can't see. Cause my trash can is below me. So I apologize. Um, but basically the idea in my, my art pieces is that kids are like, we can still see that connection. Like when, you know, when you're a kid, you can still see, uh, a connection, your connection to the universe. That's why kids like have such a great, um, imaginary life. You know, they, they still can see the possibilities. They still see our connection in nature. It's pretty cool. Kids are cool, man. I always encourage people to go like talk to kids. They're really interesting. They have interesting perspectives on things. Like I love talking to my nephew. Cause like they just have a brilliant way of looking at the world, you know? And I think a lot of people don't give kids enough credit. All right, so we're getting ready. We're almost done with like the dark section. All right, now I'm gonna do this lighter bit. So in these areas here, I'm still going to color them in. I don't know what I did here. Come on. Oh yeah. But I'm just gonna go lighter pressure. Okay. So all I'm doing is loosening up my pressure. I'm trying to stay, I'm turning this because I'm trying to stay in the same direction, but not touching it with my hand because charcoal gets everywhere. So that's why I keep turning it. And you can let it get a little bit darker towards the, the dark areas that we did before. 
so it doesn't look quite so stark of a difference. All right, this line I'm going to actually I'm going to let that be a different direction. What we'll do is when we're using the spreader, we'll just make sure we spread in the right direction. My number two pencil is wanting to... Sorry, that might have been really loud, I just realized. I'm like dropping my sketch pad on the table right next to my microphone. So hopefully that wasn't in everybody's ear. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing here. And when we use our spreader, we'll just make sure we go in the same direction. All right, last one. We're doing good. Remember light pressure. we're going to do is remember we left those fin areas. So I want to get close to those fin areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lighten my pressure right up to them. So I'm going to go right up to them, but I'm light, I'm loosening my pressure. So it's not similar to what we did with the, the, these big, ripple shapes. <sighs> okay. Now, now we're going to spread. Everything was going so well until you started coloring the background. Oh no! What, <laughs> what happened to the background? I guess we're going to find out. All right, Bumbo. Come on. I know that you can do this. The most brilliant mathematician I know. Maybe next to Dimitri, though. Dimitri's pretty, pretty brilliant. So now I'm, I'm filling everything in. Now I'm just, I'm, I'm not paying attention to my lines anymore. I'm not worrying about it. I'm just filling everything in. These areas here aren't going to fill in as much because, uh, you know, we put less there. There's not as much. You will try your best to fix it, but there's no guarantee you will, <laughs> you might, but somehow I have a feeling you won't. I think it's going to be nice. And I can't wait for you to share it in the Discord server. So remember I promised that I was going to go all the same direction here. I'm trying. but it's not working. All the little charcoal dust is going everywhere. So just be careful not to smear it. That's why you want to keep your hand. I'm keeping my hand up. So what is everybody's plans for the weekend? Anybody got anything good planned? Hopefully. I think more and more people are starting to 
leave quarantine. I don't, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable doing that. You've got school tomorrow. You've got school on, oh, wait. That's Sunday. You have school on Sunday? Bumbo, I'm confused. Crocheting and programming. Oh wait, today is already Sunday? I thought you were only, I thought you were only 15 hours ahead of me. Hmm. Well, you still have a full day then. You're only 15 hours ahead. Today is Friday, Bumbo. So it's Saturday for you. What are you talking about? Right. It's tomorrow is sa is Saturday or it is Saturday right now. So tomorrow is Sunday for you. It's Saturday right now for you. Right. It's Friday here, but he lives in Russia like um closer to the international dateline than, than Japan. So he's 15 hours ahead of Eastern time. So he's 16 hours ahead of you, Crixano. He's plus 11 GMT, I remember that, I remember that. This is a lot of spreading, I'm just going to say. Try to be careful when you get close to your fish so you don't accidentally. We don't necessarily need any of Bob Ross's happy accidents right at the moment. Not right at the moment. Especially with charcoal because charcoal doesn't erase well. You can do cool things with it with an eraser, which we're going to be doing, but... It doesn't erase well from an area you don't want it to be. I think they do start weeks. I don't know. I start my weeks on Monday. I think some places start on Sunday and some start on Monday. I think it's just like a preference thing. I'm trying to be really careful against this fish, which means I have to go in a different direction. It just is what it is. A religious component. Yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> That would make sense to start on Sunday. But the thing is, is I thought that was the last day. I thought Sunday was like the day of rest, like the last day. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. This I'm going to go ahead and do vertically because we're going to be erasing out of it. And so you're not even going to be able to tell. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that my 
my paper had slipped down. For 15 years, you were confusing Sunday and Saturday until it became really important at one point a year ago. Oops, eight years. I was going to say, Bumbo, you've been confusing Saturday and Sunday since you were two. <sighs> That's true. S Saturday, is Sabbath is Saturday. That's true. Yeah, the early Christians were having none of that. Or, well, it would have probably been the Catholic Church that did it. They were like, nope, it's Sunday. You heathens get with the program. I'm sure that's what they were saying. Okay, I'm going to turn this upside down. Just so I can get this little area without... Without, uh getting charcoal all over my hand. Look at this. I have done a great job not getting charcoal on my hand. I'm pretty proud of myself because normally I'm covered. Covered. You should have seen me in my art classes back when I went to Florida State and I was doing drawing and I, I like would come out like, you know, covered in charcoal everywhere. <sighs> okay. Now. I could probably continue and make this look really even. I'm not going to though. I kind of like the messy look. I think it looks nice. So now I'm going to take my eraser. Oh, wait, not yet, not yet, not yet. Sorry. Oh, is she, are you using your finger instead of a spreader? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to use my spreader, but if you don't have one, you can use like your pencil or whatever. And we're going to come up and just draw on our little lines here. And we're just slightly darkening them. And I'm just gonna fill them in just a little bit, not all the way up, just a little bit. Just enough to give them kind of a, an edge. Now, if you want to join the Discord server, you see down here, I've got, um, this is the link, but there's also, um, this is an actual link on here. This is just like an image of the link. But if you click on the Discord button below, then that is an actual link. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same over here. Okay, and just like lightly, just very lightly kind of color in. Again, we're not going all the way. Just, just a little bit. All right. Here I'm going to actually shade a little bit. Actually there I think I want to use charcoal. Hold on. almost forgot these little guys. Can't forget the little fins. Okay. 
This one actually kind of erased my lines. That's not okay. I'm gonna I'm just gonna come in here. I'm just outlining things with my charcoal, in case you were wondering. I am using my charcoal here. Just to kind of outline things. Make them look a little bit darker. Possible to use static electricity to remove eraser piles from paper after erasing. I bet it is. I bet it is possible. All right, let's see. Darken that a little bit. Maybe color in the eyes a little bit. No, I don't know. Yeah, I will. I'm going to think about that. Do I want to? Yeah, you know. Okay. Just gave it some definition. All right, now, now we should be ready for the eraser. All right, so you can use your kneaded eraser or if you don't have one, uh, you can use just a regular or uh, the, the back, you know, your pencil eraser. So I'm gonna use my kneaded eraser. And we're going to do concentric circles concentric circles. So starting, I'm going to start up here. I'm just going to do like a little circle in the corner there. Now, notice how black this gets. Your eraser is going to that's going to happen. So you just knead it in if you've got a kneaded eraser or use a different corner if you're using a different kind of eraser. Now, if you're just using this, all you just rub it because it's going to get really black. So try to be careful when you get to the, you know, this, these tendril things because they're so skinny that you can color right over them, which I just did with your eraser because your eraser is picking up charcoal. Okay, now when you come to your fins, you can actually go through the fin. All right, one more. All right, and I got just a little bit inside my fish, which I don't want. Same thing, I got inside my tendril because I wasn't being careful enough. So I'm gonna take my kneaded eraser, make like a little point. And I'm just gonna, there. I'm just gonna take that part out. All right, and down here we've got now. I went over my edge a little bit. That should erase right up. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do this one down here in the corner. Look at that, look how black that's getting. Now, if you did number two pencil, then it might not be so bad. Like it might not be so dark. So you might not have as many problems.
All right. And then this one here. I'm going to start with just like a little guy right here and then go out from there. Remember, you can go through your fin. All right, and then I'm going to clean up my edges. There we go. Clean up these edges here. You can just use the side of your eraser if you have that. All right. Uh, either with your finger or spreader, come in and just emphasize these lines. And just have, you can go through your, your fins a little bit. So we are done. When you get caught up, we will, I encourage you to take a picture and post it in Discord and we can go over it. Now, don't forget to sign. I'm going to use my 2B pencil and sign. And then I'm going to do my critique. So the first thing I notice is that, well, all right. So with a critique, uh, what I usually do is I talk about what's effective and ineffective in the drawing. Because um, if you talk about what you like and don't like, you're likely to miss things that are actually pretty important. Um, this, this is actually for anything that you do. When you're doing a critique of your work, don't critique what you like and don't like. Because you might like something, but it's not very effective. Or you might dislike something, but it's extremely effective in the drawing. Um, or whatever it is that you're working on, programming, what have you. Um, so, I talk about what's working and what's not. So we want this to look like koi. I think that overall, it looks like a koi fish. Um, if I could, had to say what was most effective, I actually really like, I said like, I know, I know, I did it. But the spots, I think these spots are very effective, especially because they're light. Now I could go in and darken them up, but I don't want to. I think because they're light, it actually looks pretty nice. Like I, I'm, and I'm also seeing some places here, um, Let's see, right past the eyes, there should be a little bit of shadow, a little bit, just a little bit, not much, but a little bit, because then it goes down here. I'm going to use my, um, my spreader, but it's like the side of their face. They've got like a, you know, it goes down. So there would be a little tiny bit of shading there. Um, what is ineffective, your camera sucks. Well, take a picture anyway. I mean, you know, do your best and upload it. Um, what I think is ineffective, pro 
probably the fins. I think I could crisp up those fins a little bit and make them look a little neater, especially let's look at the reference photo again. I'm going to pull up Discord and show you the reference photo. So you see like these fins are pretty clean, you know, and if you look at mine, it's really choppy. Like, these are really choppy. So I could clean these up a little bit and make them nice lines. Probably what I would do is take like a 4B pencil and come in and just draw the lines all the way from the front to the end, from the, the beginning to the end there. Like that. And I mean, I need to clean them up a little bit more than what's going to happen right now but I just was showing you what was possible. But the fins are what I think need the most work for mine. Now, if you wanna upload yours, we'll take a look at it. You do not have to share, or you can share and not have me critique, either one, doesn't matter. You can also share other artwork if you are working on something else. Already these are looking better just by me doing that. Okay, really quick, I wanna show you something. So I have this hairspray here. Now this is inexpensive hairspray. You don't need anything fancy. I wanna show you guys, I'm gonna actually stand back so you can see me um, because this is an important thing. You need to fit, you need to, to spray like a fixative on your, let's see, uh, let me get it so. Uh, okay, so I'm holding it probably about six to eight inches away and spraying up and down. And then you're going to let that dry. That's important, um, especially if you use charcoal, because it will get all over your the back. You learn a lot about using hairspray in high school art class. Yeah, it's great. Okay, so... Let's go to Discord. Let's go to Discord. So, Art Crit. All right, we have some koi here. Okay, so, Bum Bread uploaded his koi. First of all, excellent. I actually, okay, so what I think is the most effective is something that didn't follow my instructions at all, and I love it. Uh, these fins here, like that look like they have kind of ragged edges. That is beautiful. And I think like by going on your own style there, then I, I think that was very effective that you did that, especially using, it looks like you used a number two pencil and um, you know, you it, number two pencil doesn't always get exactly the uh, effect, but this looks excellent. Um, you said you fixed up, did you? No, no, yeah, okay. Um, so the only thing, actually, I don't really see a whole lot here that, uh, did you post something else? You did, okay. Oh, I see, oh, you added some color, interesting. Okay, so you added some color. What I would do is put color somewhere else in the, it doesn't have to be very big, just really light. Like maybe your concentric circles could be like a slight yellowish green or something. Um, and, you know, to give your ripples. But color somewhere else in the drawing would would just, just bring it out just a, a, a little bit. But yes, this looks excellent. And I like that it's got your own style to it. So that would be my suggestion, is just to bring in like the yellow and the green bring that in and maybe in your concentric circles very lightly. You don't have to do much. Okay. So are these the same, Crixano? Are these the same drawing? Just, just different pictures? This looks really good. I see what you mean by it being skinny, but I actually think it looks excellent. Um, so what I would do is, let's see, one with fish uh, with flash and one without. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, cool. Um, so what I would do is keep working 
on darkening um, the areas inside the concentric circles just so it matches like see this area being really dark like just carry that into your to the um, the light part and then take your eraser and erase out here in the dark part just erase out so that concentric circle looks like it continues if that makes sense um, but yeah just darken the dark areas of the circles and you can leave the light part alone but darken the dark areas a little bit uh, and this looks excellent now let's see um, what is most effective first of all I actually think that the fact that your fish is very thin is very effective I think it, it works well um, your fins are very very precise like your your line work oh man is way better than mine <laughs> I need to work on my line so bad in my fins um, but yeah your line work is excellent here it's nice Maybe you could, um, right at the edge of the fins, just bring your, um, your, since you were using your finger as a spreader, then um, just like lightly kind of do little um, circular motions right at the edge there and get just a little bit of uh, the darkness in there. You guys, those are excellent. Thank you so much for sharing too. So I appreciate that you did the work with me and um, thank you for sharing. If you um, have any questions, of course, you can always post in uh, the Just Chatting or in Art Crit. You can ask questions there. I appreciate you joining me today. Tomorrow we are going to be doing a goldfish with acrylic paints. Um, and so hopefully I will see you then. That will be at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you so much everyone for joining me tonight and have a wonderful weekend.